Psalm 66 is where our Bible study takes place for tonight. And while you're making your way there, let me just pray for us and just commit our Bible study to the Lord. God, we thank you for our time tonight. Uh, We love you and we love your word. And so we just pray now that you would speak to us and teach us as we study your word together, Lord. Pray for my brothers and sisters who came into this room tonight, potentially with a lot of worry or anxiety, maybe just different distractions. They can't take their mind off of certain things. Would you just right now just calm their hearts? Would you open up our hearts now to hear from you and to hear what you have for us as we study your word together? God, we love you and I thank you for this time that we get to spend together. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. So we're really gonna be only focusing on three verses, three verses within this chapter, Psalm 66. The Christian life, as you know, is a life of continual growth and maturation. The theological term for this is sanctification. Sanctification. Now hear me on this, I'm not talking about um, self-improvement, I'm not talking about being the best you. I'm not talking about behavior modification. I'm talking about the awesomeness of coming into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then when you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, God by his Holy Spirit begins to purify your life and purify your heart and mind and do the cleansing work that only God can do by his power and by his spirit. And it's important to remember that when you come into this relationship with Jesus Christ, that God loves you too much to allow you to stay the same as you were. In all of your sin, in all of your junk, in all of your mess, in all of your shame, when you come into this relationship with Jesus and you surrender everything to him and you give your life over to Jesus Christ, he begins this purification process and he cleanses you and he washes you as you turn from sin and as you come into that relationship and you surrender. He takes that and he purifies us and he takes us just as we are in our filth and in our mess and as a part of God's purification process, this process is not always comfortable. The process of God's purification of our hearts, it's not always easy. It causes some discomfort. It can be difficult and challenging and painful at, this t- at, at certain times in our lives. And what is this process called? Well, the psalmist here in Psalm 66 calls it the refining process. The refining process. A little bit of background on Psalm 66. The writer actually goes unnamed. A lot of the Psalms, you know, we think David wrote a Psalm, David wrote most of the Psalms, Moses wrote a Psalm. This Psalm goes unnamed. It's, it's what uh, Bible commentators call an orphan Psalm, all right? It's because it has no mom or dad. There's, the author's not identified. So this is an orth, orphan Psalm. About a third of the Psalms are considered orphan Psalms. The author isn't identified. So this is one of them here in Psalm 66. And the theme of Psalm 66, basically what the writer is trying to communicate is praising God for the awesome things that he does in our lives, specifically through the refining process. Praising God, God giving all glory and thanks to the Lord because of the awesome deeds that he does, but specifically pertaining to the refining process that he does in our hearts. So let's take a quick glance, Psalm 66. We're just gonna read verses 10 through 12. So start with me, verse 10, it says this, For you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. So there's our word, refined. You've refined us as as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to rich fulfillment. So here what the psalmist is telling us is number one, that the refining process involves difficulty and discomfort. That's what he says here in verses 11 through 12, that the refining process involves difficulty and discomfort. Just listen to the language he uses here, verse 11. He says, you brought us into the net. Your translation might say prison or captivity. 
So the psalmist says, you brought us into the net, you laid affliction on our backs, you've caused men to ride over our heads, so you've put people uh, in authority and leadership over us. You've caused men to ride over our heads, we went through fire and through water. Now, no one knows exactly what time in Israel's history that the writer is referring to could have been when the writer, uh, it could have been that the writer is referring to Israel's time in Egypt when they were slaves. That's early in their history. Could be talking about later in their history when they're captive in Babylon. The prophet Daniel and Ezekiel talk all about that when they were taken captive from Jerusalem. So could have been a number of things that the writer is talking about, but nonetheless, he's communicating that God's refining process sometimes involves a measure of discomfort and difficulty. That's what he says here. He's, he talks about how you brought us into this net. You caused men to ride over our heads. You brought affliction on our backs. But he starts this psalm by saying, you've refined us. You've tested us. So the refining process involves some measure at times of discomfort and difficulty. If you've been coming to Cornerstone any you know, period of time, you, you've probably heard my dad, Pastor Gary, uh, make fun of West Virginia. And that's just what, that's just what he does. Um, sometimes I do as well. And really, it's all just, it's all just because you know, family makes fun of family. My, our roots, the Hamrick roots, go back to the hills of West Virginia. My great-great-grandfather, he was a preacher on horseback, and he just went and he preached the gospel on horseback through the hills of West Virginia. So listen, when I make fun of West Virginia, when you hear Pastor Gary making fun of West Virginia, it's all in love. It's all in the family. I'm just curious, who who can also trace their family roots to West Virginia? What's going on, cousin? Cousins, cousins. Okay. Okay, none of you all marrying each other now. All right, that's weird. Keep it out of the family. But it's good to see you guys. And, you know, we know West Virginia, much of West Virginia is coal mining country. A lot of West Virginia is coal mining country. So just over the hill, a lot of coal mining country. And whether you're dealing with coal or whether you're dealing with other rocks or minerals, other precious metals, you have coal, gold, silver, all of that stuff, there's a refining process that needs to take place before that metal can be useful. And the writer here, he is comparing our lives to the refining process that certain metals go through. And this is what the psalmist is talking about here. When we get saved, it is as if God pulls us from the dirt. And we show up in all of our mess and in all of our filth, and then the Lord, by His Holy Spirit, when we give our filth to the Lord, He begins to purify and refine our hearts. Listen, the, the conception, we talked about this last week, I think, when Patty was here, the conception, it's a misconception, but the conception that you need to clean yourself up before you can be in a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's a misconception. God minds us out of the, you know, he, he minds us out of the dirt and out of the filth. We come to Jesus, He finds us, And then he begins that purification process in our lives and in our hearts when we turn from sin and we surrender everything to Jesus. So we come to Jesus in all of our filth when he minds us from the field and then he begins that purification in our lives and in our hearts. But when someone refines rocks and metals and minerals, that process involves discomfort. The process to refine different rocks and metals involves washing and cutting and breaking and heat. Coal, to refine coal, it goes through this chemical bath to remove all the sulfur. Diamonds, you submerge diamonds into this acidic solvent. You place it into intense heat, 400 to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, before it becomes workable with silver or gold. There are other metals often bound to it, like lead or zinc, tin or copper. And so you put it into the furnace. And silver, you turn it up to about 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Gold, you turn up the heat to about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's this intense heat in order to refine it and separate all of the impurities. I mean, talk about discomfort and difficulty. 
And it's easy for a metal or a stone to go through that intense heat and that intense discomfort because they don't have, the, those metals don't have any sense of feeling. But talk about when the Lord does his refining work in our lives. That's hard. When the Lord turns up the heat in your life because he's wanting to refine you and purify you and he turns up the heat and he puts on the squeeze, that, that's uncomfortable. That causes discomfort and that is difficult. But that's what the Lord does in our lives. That's what the psalmist says. You refine us just like someone refines silver or gold. But it involves intense heat. It involves difficult circumstances. But sometimes that's what the Lord does in our lives. God often uses people or trials or struggles, difficult life circumstances, in order to refine us and strengthen our faith in Him. And guys, God has done that numerous times in my life. Now, here's the key. When you feel the intense heat and when you feel the difficulty, you can either do one or two things. You can either resist the difficulty and resist the heat, or you can embrace it and realize that God might be trying to teach me something in this intense difficulty and in this discomfort. And I've seen people, and I've played both sides in my own life, when I've gone through difficulty or faced discomfort, sometimes me in my life, and I've seen this in other people, sometimes I resist the Lord, and in my difficulty and my discomfort, I don't run to the Word, I don't run to the Lord, but I make my own way because life, is, life with Jesus is too hard sometimes. But here's the key when you're being refined and when you're going through difficulty and discomfort to not resist it but actually press further into the Lord because he's doing something in your life, shaping you more into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. But it doesn't feel too good. Just like when one refines silver or gold, there's intense heat. In the refining process, there's something, something called the dross. And the dross basically is all the garbage and all the junk and impurities that surface to the top after it's gone through this intense heat. It's called the dross. It's all the junk and all the impurities in your life. And that is what the Lord does in our lives as well. When we're facing different discomfort or different difficulty and we feel like the heat is turned up in our lives, maybe have you considered that God necessarily isn't bringing you on this, but certainly he has allowed this to put on the squeeze in your own life, to turn up the heat in your own life, that the dross might rise to the surface, that he might blow it away, cut it away. That's what happens in the refining process. When all the impurities, when all the dross comes to the surface, the one refining that metal will either skim or blow away the dross to make the stone or the metal more precious. And guys, that's what the Lord does in our own lives. When we come to him in all of our filth, all of our mess, and he turns up the heat, and then all of the dross, all of the junk, all of the impurity from our lives rises to the surface. It's so that the Lord can blow, off, blow away the dross. What dross might he be attempting to remove or cut away or blow away from your life? Maybe the dross of gossip. Maybe the dross of lust. Maybe the dross of anger. Maybe the dross of bitterness. Maybe the dross of pride. Maybe the dross of addiction. Maybe the dross of unforgiveness. And when you figuratively feel like the temperature is up and God is putting on the squeeze in your life, don't despise the discomfort. Don't despise it. Secondly, the refining process involves times of testing. And this is what he says in verse 10. The very first words of this theme verse, for you, O God, have tested us. You, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. And again, we're not exactly sure what trial in Israel's history is being referenced, but whatever this trial or difficulty was, the writer says that it served to test them. Now, does every difficulty in our lives serve as a test from God? No, not necessarily. I don't want you to get the idea that every difficulty or every challenge that you face is 
God testing you. That's not necessarily the case. But I don't think that it's wrong to ask the question when you're facing difficulty or discomfort, Lord, what do you wanna teach me through this? Lord, what can I learn from this? Because the psalmist here, he references that this refining process involved in Israel's history some form of testing. Testing. Now, tests, why do we, why do we hate tests? Why do we hate exams? I was never a really good test taker in school. That's why I, I honestly, like in school, I had to pay attention to the teacher. I had to take good notes. I had to do like all of the participation kind of things that got you like free 20 points in class because I knew that I was gonna fail or at least probably get an average on the test. But it's like, okay, if I actually participate in class, I pay attention, get on the teacher's good side, I'll at least po probably slide by with a B in this course. But taking tests, we, Taking tests make us feel uncomfortable, but the only reason that we get nervous for tests particularly is when we know that we don't know what's going on up here. And so the psalmist here and all throughout scripture, writers in scripture tell us that God sometimes tested his people to reveal what was in here. And this is what happened in the wilderness wandering. Remember this, when Israel left their slavery in Egypt. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter eight, it specifically says that in that 40 year period when Israel was wandering through the wilderness, they escaped their Egyptian slavery, making their way into the promised land. They're in the wilderness for 40 years because they're disobedient, they're stubborn, they're rebellious against the Lord. And the Lord says in Deuter Deuteronomy chapter eight, I was using that time to test you to find out what was in your heart. It says this in Deuteronomy eight verses one through two, one through two. Be careful, this is the Lord speaking, be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Verse two, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble you and detest you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. God tested Israel. And it was not because he didn't know what was in their hearts. It was because they didn't know what was in their hearts. God didn't test them to find out what was in their hearts. He's the Lord, he knows all things. God knew what was going on in the hearts of his people. But he tested them so that the dross could rise to the surface so that the impurities could rise to the surface. Because when the temperature is up, all of the junk rises to the surface, and then you will better be able to recognize what was in here. That's why Jesus said in the Gospels that out of uh, the, the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Because Jesus knows that what comes out of here is actually indicative of what lies in here. And so when the Lord tests us, it is not so that he can find out what's going on in our hearts, but it's so that we might finally realize our character and what's been going on in our lives. God tests us so that we understand what's in our hearts. When you take an exam, or when you take like an actual test, it's so that the teacher can, and you yourself can find out what was in here is now expressed on the paper or on the sheet or on the computer. And so when the Lord tests us, it's so that what is in here can finally be revealed out there so that we might be able to better recognize it. When you struggle with anger, when you struggle with an attitude, when you struggle with different things, your behavior is, it shows a strong indication of what you've been dealing with internally. And so just as the Lord tested his people in Deuteronomy chapter eight through the wilderness, he tested them so that they might better recognize what was in their hearts. And the psalmist here, he, he says the exact same thing in Psalm 66 verse 10. You, O oh God, you've tested us, you have refined us as silver is refined. And God will test us at times so that we finally come to an understanding of what's in our hearts so that we might surrender it to him in obedience. This is what the Lord has done in my own life several times where I've been tested, gone through difficulty, there's some discomfort, 
Lord, what are you trying to teach me? How are you trying to grow me? What in my heart do you see that I am blind to? And this is what the Lord does in our lives. Allow this season to be a season where God refines you. Understand that the current circumstances you may face in this season, God wants to use them to shape you into the man or into the woman that he's calling you to be. Guys, listen, in our young adult demographic, when we're going through a lot of different transitional periods, we've got school, we got graduation, potentially an engagement, we get married, potentially have kids and a family. There are a lot of opportunities for the Lord then to refine you and to teach you and to grow you. And unfortunately, many people use this season of life as a young adult, when you're independent and when you're on your own, this season can become a season where we're just like, hey, let's live it up, let's throw back a few, let's make some mistakes. Do not allow this season to be a season where you just continually go through life just trying to make mistakes, learn your way. Listen, use this season in life to ask the Lord the question, Lord, what do you want me to learn? What are you trying to teach me? How can I look more like your son Jesus? In what ways are you wanting to shape me and refine me and mold me and make me? Because here's the problem that I see in our young adult demographic. When you don't take this season seriously, and listen, have fun. Have, you know, don't take yourself too seriously and God not seriously enough. I'm not saying that you just have to treat this season as just such a serious season in life. Give all your cares and your anxieties to the Lord and, and live life to the full. All that being said, what happens when you don't take this season of life seriously and you just go through life just saying, hey, let's live it up, let's have fun, let's make mistakes, let's you know, live and learn kind of a men- mindset, what happens is those impurities never rise to the surface because you never fully understood what was going on in here and you take your impurities into your marriage, you take your impurities into your family and into your business and into your career and into your friendships in the future. And you need to use this season of life when you are in school, at college, trying to find out your next career move, looking for a spouse. It is such an important time, such an important period of your life to be refined by the Lord. So don't mistake the discomfort or the difficulty in your life. If you feel like the Lord is testing you, Don't despise it. It is actually out of the heart of love that our Father has for us that he's wanting to shape you and make you look more like his son Jesus. Don't despise it. Don't run from it. Allow the Lord to do his refining work in your heart and in your life. Let those impurities rise to the surface. Then you can confess it as sin, get right with the Lord, turn from it, and then he refines you you look more like his son Jesus. And yes, we're all, we're, you know, it's not like, hey, wait till you get perfect until you find a spouse. Wait till you get perfect until you can actually have a decent job. But my point being is don't use this time in your life to just live it up and have fun and make mistakes. Use this time in your life to ask the Lord to refine you, to make you look more like his son Jesus. Because the more impurities, you confess to the Lord and the more impurities and the more dross that rises to the surface so that the Lord might blow it away, the better it will be for your future marriage, for your future career, for your future family, because you're dealing with all the stuff that's in your heart. You're using this season to the glory of the Lord, saying, Lord, listen, I'm, I'm yours. You found me from the coal mine in West Virginia. Now just refine me. Put me through heat. Don't allow me to despise this difficulty and discomfort because I want to come out of this looking more like you. And that's how the psalmist ends that, that passage here in verse 12. He says, you've, he, he, he says you, you've, you've taken us through all this difficulty. Men have ridden on our backs. You've caused all of this affliction. We went through fire and through water, all of this discomfort, but this is how he ends it. But you brought us out to rich fulfillment. You brought us out to a greater place of abundance. This is the work that the Lord does in our lives. And some of you tonight, you might be going through difficulty. 
might be facing different challenges in your life. You might feel like right now you're being tested by the Lord. You feel like the heat is turned up. And sometimes when that happens, we can begin to feel like God has abandoned us. Like God isn't concerned with what we're going through in the midst of our difficulty. And I want you to be encouraged that Job, he felt the same exact way. And I'm gonna put up a verse here on the back wall because I think this is super relevant to the message tonight. Job in Job chapter 23, verses eight through 12, this is what Job said. But if I go to the east, he's not there. And if I go to the west, I don't find him. When he's at work in the north, I don't see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. You hear the language in Job's text here. He says, but if I go to the east, he's not there. He's being transparent with his feelings of abandonment. And if I go to the west, I don't find him. And when he's at work in the north, I don't see him. And when he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. So he's talking about going through difficulty and discomfort, being tested by the Lord, and he feels like God has left him. He says, I don't feel the Lord working in my life. I don't feel like the Lord is active. When I turn to the right or the left, I don't see him. When I enter this path, when I go through this door, I don't see the Lord moving and working. And sometimes in our life, guys, that's exactly what we feel. We go through difficulty, we lose a family member, we lose a loved one, we're, we, we got let go from the job, whatever it might be, whatever the test in your life you might feel like you're going through, whatever difficulty or discomfort, we feel like God is not concerned. We feel like God, whenever we turn to the right or the left or we seek Him, we get into our Bibles in the morning, we don't feel the presence of the Lord, we don't feel close to Him. It is so dangerous to base, base your faith off of feelings, because feelings are up and down, feelings come and go. And this is what Job, he's being transparent with his feelings. He's saying, God, whenever I turn to the right or to the left, to the north, to the south, every direction, you didn't seem like you were with me. But then he says, but when he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. So he's keeping the greater picture in mind here. He says, my feet have closely followed his steps. And this is what I'm talking about. When we go through difficulty or periods of testing or discomfort, we can tend to compromise on our walk with the Lord because walking with the Lord is too hard and too difficult. Walking with the Lord becomes too difficult, so I'm just gonna turn back to my old friend groups, turn back to the way I was going, turn back to the language I was using, turn back to the old bad habits because walking with Jesus is too hard, but in the old habits and in the bad friend groups, at least there was some fun, at least there was some relief, and at least there was some measure of brief comfort in that, right? But Job says here, he says, no, even though I couldn't see the Lord actively working and moving in my life, even though I turned every direction, God seemed absent. I knew he was testing me and I knew that I would come out of this like gold because he says, I have decided to follow in his footsteps. So he recognized the discomfort. He recognized the feelings of abandonment, but he knew that the Lord was still working behind the scenes. God's silence does not mean God's absence. God might seem silent in your difficulty. God might seem silent in the testing, but it doesn't mean he's absent, and Job knows that. He says, my feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. So he's talking about getting into the word of God, being obedient. It is so difficult, guys, to remain obedient in difficulty, but I am telling you, it is so worth it. Remain obedient in difficulty. Because Job knows the final outcome. I'm gonna come forth as gold. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. Such a beautiful verse to cling to. I've treasured his word more than daily bread. 
Listen, when you're going through testing or difficulty or different trials, you gotta cling to the Word of God. It's gonna be the thing that bathes your heart and mind and gives you peace, that passes understanding. So when you're going through trials, when you're going through periods of difficulty, cling to the Word, allow it to minister to your heart, and know that, yes, God might feel absent. Job thought that, but he's not. And so I'm not gonna go back to the old way, I'm gonna continue to press forward in this refining process because I know that I'll come out of it more precious than I was before. Peter in the New Testament, he echoes almost the exact words of Job. Peter in 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7, he says, so be truly glad, listen to that, be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead even though you must endure many trials for a little while, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It's being tested. It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. So just an encouragement and an exhortation for you tonight. I know that many of us are going through different unique circumstances. You might feel like you're in this time of testing, time of difficulty. I want you tonight to ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this? Refine me. Help me not to resist the heat, but help me to recognize what you're doing in my life. It's hard, Lord, it's difficult. Be transparent to the Lord with how you feel. But ask the Lord, Lord, give me an eternal perspective, not just to see through temporary eyes, but to see the greater picture. You're wanting to refine me and shape me more like into your son, Jesus. Please do that in my heart. Use this testing, use the difficulty to bring me closer to you. Help me to cling to your word. Guys, God loves you and he cares for you, First Peter also tells us, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. He's there with you in the refining process. And so right now, I just wanna take a moment, I'm just gonna pray as we kind of close our service, we bow our heads, we close our eyes. And if that's you tonight, if you're just going through a unique season where you're just feeling like the heat is up, maybe you're going through some kind of a trial or some kind of difficulty, Maybe you feel like the Lord might be testing you. Again, is every difficulty that we go through a test from the Lord? No. But maybe just consider asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this right now? So Lord, we just come before you and we just, we open up our hearts to you, God. Many through the room tonight, I'm sure are facing different difficulty, whether it's at work, maybe it's at school, maybe there's a lot of family tension, maybe someone in this room tonight has ex experienced great loss. I just pray now that you would help us, Lord, to see exactly what you're doing Refine us, purify our hearts, Lord. All of the impurities, all of the dross, may all of our sin that we're not even aware of, may it rise to the surface so that we might confess it, that you might cut away the dross from our lives, that you might blow away all of the impurities, Lord, so that we might look more like you. Use this time of testing and difficulty to help us to know what's in our hearts so that we might turn from it and repent, Lord, and have greater, deeper, intimate fellowship with you. Help us not to run from your word or resist your word, but help us to run toward your word in the midst of our difficulty. Help us to cling to it. So we just, I pray for my brothers and sisters tonight, God, purify us by your word. Purify us by the fire 
of difficulty in our lives. We just give everything to you now, God. We surrender everything to you, Lord. I pray that in the midst of discomfort, Lord, help us to not be discouraged, but again, help us to cling to you and help us to know just how much you love us. Help us to know and understand that you haven't abandoned us, but that you're walking with us. Help us to maintain an eternal perspective, Lord, that the temporary things we go through are just that, they are temporary, Lord. But you are doing a work in our lives. You are refining us and purifying our hearts tonight. So do that by your power, Lord, by your love, refine us so that we might look more like your son. We love you, God. We thank you for our time together. I pray for the rest of our week that you would go before us, Lord, whether it's at school or work. Uh, just be with us, God. Help us to fix our eyes on you. Help us to keep Psalm 66 at the forefront of our minds, Lord, knowing that any difficulty or any trials, Lord, that is purifying us and it's strengthening our faith, bringing us closer to you. So we love you, God. Again, we thank you for our time. Um, we just pray for our friends giving next week. Pray that many more people who don't even know you would come, they would experience this fellowship, that salvation would happen. Um, just, just give you the rest of our week and we give you our, our fun time next week at our friends giving. Um, and we just give you the rest of our night. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people together said, amen and amen.